Welcome to D-Lab Electronics. On the bench today, I have a Dynaco ST70 home tube stereo amplifier. It was brought over by a local fellow. The complaint is that he has excessive output hum on both channels. So this amplifier has the aftermarket VTA driver board installed, which runs three 12AU7 tubes. Also, the main filter capacitor has been replaced as well as a new set of tubes. So the story is, is that this amplifier was running fine. The owner installed new tubes and when he applied power, he had this terrible hum. So he said, oh, maybe I have bad tubes. So he put the original tubes back in, fired it up and the hum remained. So something has changed. Let's see if we can figure out what that is. All right, here's the top side of the Dynaco ST70 amplifier. As I stated, it's been retrofitted with the VTA driver board, which has individual bias adjustments for the four output tubes. But the thing that caught my eye as soon as the guy brought it in the door was the filter cap. If you look, there's kind of a strange little rectangular bump in the top of the filter cap. I thought, well, Maybe that just happened in manufacturing. It's just a cosmetic flaw. It's probably no big deal, but it was very suspicious to me. So the complaint was a loud AC hum coming from both channels. I'm going to give you just a short demonstration of that because I do not want to damage the amplifier. But for your reference, I just powered it up. Should come up here in a second. You'll be able to hear the hum, and then I'm going to kill it. Here it is. Alright, so that is the loud AC hum that he is experiencing. Let's investigate further and see if we can find the source. So of course, since the filter cap was recently replaced, I did not suspect it. I spent a little time checking the grounds on the chassis to see if something came loose. Then I decided, what the heck, let's go ahead and verify the cap sections with my LCR meter. So here is section one that comes right off the rectifier tube. See there's nothing on the meter. Then you go through the choke and sections two and three are connected together. Nothing. We go through this resistor and there I have 39 microfarads. So yeah, to my surprise, sections one, two, and three are obviously open on the CE manufacturing filter cap. I've used many CE manufacturing caps over the years for repairs and never had a failure or a report of a failure. So this may just be a case of a manufacturing fault. So yes, the cap needs to be changed. So here is one that is installed. You can see that it's rated at 525 volts. There's 80, 40, and 220 microfarad sections. These are normally the ones that you see as recommended replacements for the Dynaco series. For your reference, these Dynaco amplifiers run high voltages that can peak over 500 volts DC, so be very cautious when replacing them. For the CE caps, I would not go lower than the 525 volt series. To replace this cap, I'm going to install the FNT authentic caps, which are rated at 550 volts with a 600 volt surge. Okay, so the game plan is we are going to change the CE manufacturing cap with this authentic cap made by F and T. I've had really great luck with these too. After we have the old cap removed, I have a tubing cutter that will match that diameter. We're going to cut, remove the aluminum casing, and see if we can determine what caused the failure. So I have the filter cap removed, so for the fun of it, let's recheck the sections. So there's a meter, got nothing, nothing. There's the 40 microfarads. So these three sections are open and that section is still alive. Here is my new cap. And this one has 240 microfarad sections and 220s. 
40, 40, 20, 20. So let's get this cap installed. Okay, the new filter cap is in place and wired up. So now we're going to take the old CE manufacturing cap. I have a tubing cutter. I'll be able to put this guy right in here. We'll cut it open, inspect the insides, and see if we can spot the problem. So this little tubing cutter is just like you'd use for cutting copper pipe if you're doing plumbing. So you just increment in the blade and spin him around. You can see it's starting to crease the case. On this aluminum cases, it usually crushes them slightly. So once I get this cut, we'll probably have to make a slot and peel off this aluminum so we can inspect where the terminals come in. All right, we're cut, so I should be able to pull off. There she goes. Well, I think we already see the failure. It appears as though the terminal is corroded right off the bottom of the cap. I don't know how that could have happened, but those would be the open terminals, and that's why the cap failed. All right, I'm bringing the amp up on a variac right now. I always like to bring them up on a variac after changing a filter cap so we don't shock it. So I'm applying 90 volts right now. Current looks stable. And the amp is up. I can hear a slight buzzing. So she is live. And the hum is gone. So the filter cap corrected the problem. So the next steps, I need to set the bias on the amplifier and give it a test run to make sure that it's good to go. But this is a strange failure mode. Um, I have no idea what it would have caused that type of corrosion in the filter cap. Maybe some type of interaction with the epoxy they used to hold the terminals in the base. But for some reason, it failed. I do not see any arcing in here. This looks like corrosion that attacked the terminals. Pretty interesting, huh?